everyone, I'm Derek. Welcome back to my channel. I'm finally getting to my review on the Forney Easy Weld 140 MP. It's a multi process welder that does MIG, TIG, stick and then flux core obviously because it does MIG and it's been a great machine over the last year and a half that I've owned it. I'm gonna go over some of the features and details in this video. I'm gonna just talk a little bit about my experience and kind of how things have held up over time. So let's hit on the warranty real quick. They give you a one year warranty on all the ele internal electronics. So what that says to me is basically this machine should work for you for a year. What they give you 30 days on is the outer parts. So I assume this is basically things that do wear out over time, which would be your ground clamp, your leads, your MIG gun, or your stick electrode holder and things like that. So being that this is a multi-process welder, it's going to have different duty cycles for different welding processes. Uh, it starts off at the lowest, I believe, at TIG, which if I'm not mistaken is 30% at 80 amps. Then you go up to stick, which is 30% uh, at 90 amps. And then uh, MIG and flux core, which is 30% at 110 amps or 110. Yeah, I think it was amps. I don't remember exactly uh, how they, they defined it, but it seemed to get better as you went from uh, TIG to stick and then to MIG or flux core. So moving into the control panel here, I want to talk a little bit about how it works. Basically up here at the top, you have your wire feed. If you have gas connected, it's going to open up that uh, gas solenoid on the inside of the machine to release gas. Center is the stick, is stick welding, and then the bottom is TIG welding. I'm just gonna get this out of the way real quick. I've never TIG welded with this machine. I've never TIG welded in my life. It is a nice feature that it's got it. I just can't speak to how it works at all. I've never used it. It's a very basic, simple switch, but it is going to allow you to change the process and it just does what it's supposed to at a very nice price point in my opinion. Uh, nothing fancy like the digital machines that some of the fancier more expensive machines come with including some of the Forneys but just not this one in particular. We'll move down and talk about the infinity dials here. They do range from numbers 1 to 10 over here on the wire feed speed side and then 1 to 10 over here on the volts and amperage side. Uh, one thing that I really like about it is that the numbers are really nice and big and easy to read and if you get really good at welding you can uh, fine tune them. There's like no positive stops uh, like on some of the other cheaper machines where you like set it at 6 and then it kind of rolls into 7 and then rolls into 8. If you're really good at welding and you know exactly how to adjust your weld when you're running a bead, you can make those little fine adjustments. Uh, definitely gives you a little bit more controllability over your welds. Let's just say that I'm nowhere near that good at welding of uh, any process. So here you do have a ventilation grill for the fan, and then you do have a Euro style plug for uh, your MIG welding, your wire feed welding. And then you do have DINS plugs, which I believe are the 25 millimeter DINS plugs to select your polarity. This wire that goes to the inside controls what goes to the electrode or you can plug your stick welder into that and then the other one whichever side uh, with, however you set your polarity is going to go to your ground clamp. Not that this matters a whole lot to me but they do have these uh, little rubber bumpers here plastic bumpers to kind of protect the machine. Kind of cool that they included those. A little bit of attention to detail to kind of help you protect your machine, I think. Kind of a random time to throw this in, but I do want to say that I've never actually hit the duty cycle using this machine. I weld a lot of uh, 14 gauge and 16 gauge steel and then uh, once in a while like eighth inch or something somewhere in between those thicknesses so it's not like I'm welding really thick metal where I've got to turn up the settings all the way up to weld like really thick like 3 16 inch metal or anything like that and typically if, if I do I just kind of pull out the flux core welder and weld with that uh, because I can get a little bit hotter where this is just kind of always set up for MIG which is a little easier just to leave it that way so since we're here at the front of the machine let's just just talk about the electrodes real quick. This is your wire feed electrode. I don't think that it's uh, anything that is super high quality, but I don't have any issues with it. Totally adequate. Kind of the uh, theme of this machine is just adequacy. It's totally adequate. It works and it's probably going to weld as good or better than you can if you're thinking of picking it up. This kind of falls right in line with that. It's got a little hook here to hang things on. I found that kind of useful. The plastic itself doesn't seem like anything super high quality, any kind of super special plastic, but it's fine. I've had no issues. Uh, the trigger has a nice audible click. 
Hopefully you can hear that just so that you kind of know that if you're not having an arc striking up, when you hear that click, your arc should have struck up. I'm not in love with the angle on this. I have a different welder, my Century FC90 Flex Core welder. I like the angle on the torch a little bit better on that machine. Um, and then you do have your uh, gas nozzle, which can be changed out if you're wanting to run flux core when you first get this machine or whatever, and you're not set up for MIG yet, you can put those little flux core shields on there. And then of course, copper contact tips, which are really easy to change out. For the stick electrode, again, 25 millimeter DINS connector, a lot of plastic. I don't think, again, that this is anything too special or too high quality, but definitely nothing wrong with that. With that being said, it does give you all your different angles to hold your electrode. I probably have been referring to this as electrode. I mean electrode holder, but basically uh, nothing wrong with it either. It works. I don't stick weld that much especially not with this machine. So this is totally adequate and probably a perfectly good electrode holder to start learning how to stick weld with if this is your first machine. And even if you become really good at it, it's probably good enough as it is. So we'll talk about the ground clamp real quick, just to let you know this is not the ground clamp that came with it. The one that does come with it, again, kind of fits that adequate role. Um, I just wanted to change it out. I had this one laying around. I wanted to change it out because it's a little bit better, a little bit stiffer spring, and the mouth opens up a little bit wider, the jaws on the ground clamp. So nothing wrong with the one that it comes with, but I feel like I get a little bit better ground with this clamp, and uh, I don't see any harm in changing it out when I've got this one laying around. But the one that it comes with is just fine. So here on the inside, it does give you the ability to run 10 pound spools, which I think is a great feature. On other multi-process welders from other brands, I wouldn't be surprised that this is kind of a normal feature, but I know because it's what I've got the most experience with is flux core machines. Most flux core machines are not letting you run 10 pound spools. So this is a really nice thing. In my opinion, I like it. Uh, and it's kind of a big deal to me. Uh, just know that you probably should do your own research and that a lot of other multi-process welders are probably coming with the option to have 10 pound spools. I just don't know off the top of my head. And then over here, something that I find kind of a big deal is this wire feed mechanism. The whole thing is made out of metal. It looks like cast aluminum and then maybe some stamped steel. And then it does give you, they do give you a wire wheel with a smooth groove around it for welding with MIG wire and then a knurled texture around the other side for welding with flux core wire. You need the knurling in the wheel to help push that wire through because you can't clamp it down so tight. It does give you the ability to run 030 or a, 3, a 30 thousandths wire or 035 or 35 thousandths wire through this machine with that one wheel. I believe this thing can run uh, oh, uh, 23 thousandths wire but I think you're gonna have to buy a separate wheel for it if I'm not mistaken. So in my opinion, that wire feed mechanism is pretty high quality. Uh, compared to some of the plastic cheapy wire feed mechanisms I've seen, I was pretty excited to open this machine up and see that myself when I first got it. There's a decent little grab handle up there to make moving this machine around easier. And then it does come with a dedicated 20 amp circuit, 110 volt plug. Uh, it's got the, I'm sure you can see the sideways plug here and the straight up and down plug there with the ground wire on the bottom. If you can use this machine on a dedicated 20 amp circuit, you're probably going to get the best welds that you can get out of this machine with that. But if you're like me and you got to run off an extension cord or you just don't have a dedicated 20 amp uh, outlet or circuit in your shop or garage, they do include this adapter for running off of the for 15 amp and lower circuits, which I don't know if they go lower than that. I'm no electrician. Nice that they at least think enough, uh, think of the consumer enough to include that uh, adapter on there. This is a really terrible shot of it, but just so you know, they do also include this really nice chart here on the inside of the door where you can refer to it to set, put all your settings down for the different processes with different sized electrodes, welding different uh, thicknesses of steel. It's a really nice chart. Check it out if you decide to pick this thing up. Most welders that I know of include it. So just to go over the back of the machine here real quick, you do have your gas, your shielding gas inlet. And then uh, as you would expect, the machine's power uh, comes through this line here. And you do have the power switch which has this little plastic protector on it. Seems like a decent quality switch. Uh, and then you have the fan back here for cooling the machine as you weld. 
Uh, something you need to know is that this fan runs all of the time the minute you turn the machine on. So just to kind of discuss, uh, now that we got kind of the features out of the way and the specifics, uh, what I think overall of this machine, I guess I'll start here. Uh, I wish that I would have picked up this machine from the very beginning. I wouldn't have wasted time buying the Amico stick weller that I bought just to learn after spending almost $200 on a stick welder that I'm terrible at stick welding. Uh, even though I do really just need more practice, I wish that I would have just been able to buy this machine from the start on top of the Century FC90 that I bought, which was also 200 bucks between those two machines. I basically could have paid for this thing. The flux core welder that I bought was the first machine that I bought and I basically just learned that this is something I wanna get a little bit better at, put a little bit of time into and have some fun with. Uh, when I first started welding, I could have done it all with this machine. Everything I'm running is 110 volt anyway. And uh, if I could go over and do it all over again, I would have just saved myself the money and picked up this machine from the start. I don't think that there's a lot of companies out there that are offering as competitive of a machine at the price point that Forney is. I can name a couple off the top of my head. Clutch that might be a little bit cheaper, but definitely no better from what I can tell. I picked up this machine for $405 last time I looked at it. It was $391. Bucks. Uh, but then another brand is Yes Welder. I believe that they've got a multi-process welder around the same price point. Clutch, I believe, is a house brand for Northern Tool. Forney is an American company, an American brand, and uh, this machine I do believe is made in China. Pretty much all really inexpensive welding machines are going to be made in China these days. Uh, at least you can support a great American company, Forney. There's probably a few other options out there, but I'm not really aware of them off the top of my head anyway, but I think that this is as good of an option as any as I've already kind of mentioned. If you're thinking of picking it up, I would not hesitate to pick it up. Again, I've been using this thing for a year and a half and it's been a great quality machine. Had no issue this is probably the most major issue I've experienced that is that this little rubber protector that goes up inside the connection part of the welding lead here has broken off over time uh, but not really a big deal outside of that everything else on this has totally lived up to my expectations which I don't have a lot because I'm still totally learning how to weld. I'm a DIY level welder, which, you know, there's a lot of DIYers out there that are probably every bit as good as the pros. So I'll just kind of put myself down there at the beginning. I'm still learning. With all that being said, guys, pick it up from Home Depot, Amazon. Uh, there's probably a few other retailers. Those are, the, those are the two that come to my head first, but uh, it's great welder. Don't hesitate to pick it up if you're thinking of picking up a multi-process machine. I paid for this thing 100% out of pocket, and so I have no reason to try to sell it to you other than I just think it's a great welder. It's where I wish I would have started in the first place. It's definitely worth considering. Thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't given this video a thumbs up already, please go down and do that. And uh, if you're not a subscriber already, I'd appreciate it if you went down and click subscribe as well. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.